हेलो एवरी वन आई एम रिटर्न निपम हियर एंड टूडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेन एंड ड्राइविंग प्रेशर इन रिलेशन टू एयर डेस पेशेंट्स राइट लेट अस डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्ट्रेन एंड ड्राइविंग प्रेशर इफ यू रिमेंबर फ्रॉम आर प्री मेडिकल टाइम्स वेन वी आर रीडिंग फिजिक्स एस्पेशली इलास्टिसिटी एंड द स्प्रिंग मैकेनिक्स देयर दिस वॉज द कॉन्सेप्ट द स्ट्रेन इज इक्वल टू change in length divided by initial length right so what was strain strain is equal to change in length that is called delta in length divided by initial length of a spring right so this is the formula that we used in our pre medical days when we were studying physics especially spring mechanics right so the same concept you can use here in case of lung mechanic so there the same concept can be rewritten as so here what we are doing is we are giving a tidal volume to the lungs and the lungs has some volume before we give the tidal volume that is the initial tidal volume initial volume right so the initial volume and change delta in volume that is the strain of the lungs right so the change in the volume will be tidal volume because that is what we are giving to the patient and the initial volume will be f r c or is called functional residual capacity what do you mean by that so the functional residual capacity is the amount of air that is remained in the lung after normal tidal acceleration so that means before you take a breath inside you have some air in the lung that is called the frc so the initial volume is the frc and the change in volume will be the amount of air that you take that is a tidal volume so this is the strain of the lung tidal volume by frc so now let us discuss how it is important in our case in this case for example let's say a normal patient right in a normal patient the frc is around 2000 ml right and we are giving a tidal volume of around 500 ml so what is the strain here you can easily calculate 500 by 2000 you to calculate in percentage so into 100 so this will be around 25 percentage of strain right in a normal patient however in a air dis patient what happens due to the disease process the actual lung is less right because of collapse consolidation and other things so the frc now decreases the functional residual capacity now decreases to around 500 ml Now, to the same patient, if you give a tidal volume of 500 ml, and what will be the strain? 500 by 500 in percentage, it will be 100 percent. You can see this. Uh, the strain has increased four times. So, the more the strain, more the injury, and increase in mortality. right is called villi so now how to measure the strain in the bed side right because frc is something that is remain inside the lung after normal exhalation that difficult to measure so how in the bed side we can measure the strain right so as you see in strain is equal to tidal volume divided by frc Right. Now one thing you have to remember, compliance. So when the compliance is actually high, that means the lung is not that stiff. Lung is actually very expandable or flexible. In that situation, FRC will definitely be high, is not it? 
the air that is retained in the lung after normal exhalation will be high in a normal lung a normal lung has a complex better complaints so as the complex decreases FRC will decrease a stiff lung will have a less complaints less FRC right so in the same manner we can replace this strain equal to tidal volume by complaints is the global lung strain right. and this is very easily measured how we have to remember the formula compliance is equal to tidal volume by p plat minus p p plat is the pressure in the lungs when there is no flow then you have to negate it from p which is remained all the time in the lungs that the CST static compliance. So TV by CST is equal to P plat minus P. And this is actually this is the strain. So this is actually the strain. So now just measuring the P plat minus P in the bedside, we can measure the strain. And popularly this is called as the driving pressure. Right? For the definition of driving pressure, from this equation, you can define the driving pressure as the pressure applied to the whole respiratory system above peak. Right, we are applying a pressure above peep to achieve a tidal volume when the patient is not actively breathing. This is actually definition of driving pressure. Pressure applied above peep to achieve a tidal volume when the patient is not actively breathing so we have a static complaints right so this is the driving pressure so from where this concept of driving pressure has come right so in the beginning when the ventilation in air is actually started in the beginning it was the tidal volume was calculated according to the actual body weight right so the beginning the tidal volume was calculated according to the actual body weight right and as time progressed we came to know this is actually a wrong process and it can actually increase mortality right the next concept that came of tidal volume is actually the volume of lung depends upon not the weight of the patient but the height height of the patient right so there is the concept of ideal body weight right now the current concept is that every patient who is suffering from ARDS the tidal volume has to be given according to the ideal body weight not the actual body weight and the ideal body weight depends upon the height of the patient right then there can be situation right for example a person a a person b both are six feet so both have ideal body weight same let's say it is x because it depends on height so ideal body weight will be the same now both is suffering from ards and the problem here is the person A's lung and person B lung in A only 20% lung is bad and 80% is healthy. In B 50% is bad and 50% is healthy. Now according to the ideal body weight formula you are giving same tidal volume according to ideal body to both the patient now what will happen 
in b only 50 percent is healthy so b you will suffer more villi isn't it because the same dental volume is given to lesser part of the lung and this same dental volume is given to more part of the lungs so in the b there will be villi so the ideal body weight concept is also not true 100 percent so the recent concept is that's why it has come that the tidal volume has to be decided according to the existing lung volume right this will be perfect so we have to customize the tidal volume to each of the patient right so how do this existing lung volume the existing lung volume will be proportional to the compliance or CHT static compliance if the existing lung volume is high then the compliance will be more if the existing lung volume will be less then the compliance will be less right so the tidal volume has to be adjusted to the compliance and the ratio is called driving pressure right a very important concept right so this is a driving pressure so you can understand very easily from here from the definition what is actually uh, driving pressure for example to achieve a tidal volume if you require a pressure that is high that means your lung is very stiff if to achieve the same tidal volume you require a lesser pressure that means your lung is more compliant right so driving pressure in other words is actually telling us about the compliance of the lung so if you have a patient who is having a less driving pressure that means you are requiring a less pressure to achieve the same tidal volume that is a good lung then the motility is good right if it is requiring higher pressure then the driving pressure will be less that is increasing the motility right so this is the driving pressure concept how it is came into existence right So now let us see how it actually manifests clinically. For example, so the driving pressure or the delta P is equal to P plat minus P which is equal to tidal volume by compliance, right? So in this situation what will happen is there will be two situations. We have a more compliant lung when the compliance is more we can give more tidal volume so tidal volume will be more or you can give tidal volume that is less you can give a tidal volume that is more or that is high or less so in these two situations what will happen compliance is more tidal volume more so the delta p may remain same or if you are using tidal volume less in case of compliance more the delta p may decrease also so in both the situations are actually favorable of course this is desirable however if you have a com less compliant lung so this cht is very very low we are dealing with a stiff lung and in this in that stiff lung you are giving a high tidal volume right so what will happen the delta p will actually increase that means you are giving a high tidal volume to a stiff lung so there will be higher chances of villi so there will be increased mortality so a study has been done by amato group of people and what they have found we will just tabulate it right so the p is there p plat delta p and mortality Right. the p remains same and the p plus starts increasing that means the lung is getting bad you are not changing the p but the p plus is increasing that means the lung is getting bad there is more de-recruited lung there is more consolidated lung so in this situation the delta p will be high and it implies increased mortality however if the p is rising 
you are increasing the peep to maintain the saturation or the oxygenation at the same time the peep rate also increases rising right with the rising peep the peep rate is also rising that means the peep is actually not helping the patient right in this situation the delta p remain the same but there is no change in mortality what is desirable is the last one when you increase the peep the peep is rising but the peep light is actually false that means the increase in peep actually helping the patient in de-recruiting the lung so that the complaints of the lung is getting better so in this situation the delta pill will be decreased so this actually increases the sorry actually decreases the mortality that is what we desire right so in the study they found out a delta p or driving pressure of less than 14 cm water is actually improves mortality right so this is about the strain concept or the driving pressure concept in ARDS patient. So in the next class, we will discuss about the distending pressure, the alveolar distending pressure or the transpulmonary pressure. Thank you very much.